and welcome to Learn Your Color Computer. So let's begin. I'd like to say a few words about the biggest problem in the computer community today, and that's the closet computers. They're the ones that end up in your closet, alone and neglected, after a few fun hours with playing some games. This usually takes place a few months after Christmas, when somebody buys a color computer for the kids to play with. Then, when the fun wears off, into the closet it goes, to sit and gather dust, never to realize its full potential. Some folks may have just had it break down on them and decided not to get it fixed, even for a blown fuse. Well, this has gone on for too long now. With the millions of computers in people's homes today, only a few thousand of them have taken the time to learn their computer and take advantage of the remarkable power available in the small white case. Some people have even used their computers to run their own businesses. But this is not enough. If everybody who owned a closet computer was to become a serious color computer user, we'd be a more powerful group than any other. And this is what the series of shows is all about. So let's begin. Hi, and welcome to the 10th installment of Learn Your Color Computer. In this installment, I'm going to teach you about the input-output routines and functions for the modem and for the line printer. Even if you don't have a modem or line printer, take notes anyway. You'll probably be tempted in the near future to purchase one or both of them. First of all, I strongly suggest the recommended use of some kind of an RS-232 serial cartridge for use with a modem. The internal RS-232 port on the color computer is a complicated thing to use, much less explain how to use. So, most serious color computer users reserve the internal RS-232 port for use with the line printer. If you haven't already done so, switch on the power on your modem and your line printer. The majority of RS-232 cartridges use these addresses in memory. Six five three eight four equal the data register. Six five three eight five equal the status register. Six five three eight six is the command register. And six five three eight seven is the control register. Those registers are what is used to activate the RS-232 cartridge and send data in and out of the modem. See how we can use these addresses. Type in this short program. First, we'll clear out memory with new. And then we'll start with line 10, where we say poke 65 Three eight six, comma eleven, colon. Poke. Six five. Three eight seven, comma, twenty two. That will activate the RS two thirty two cartridge, at a speed of three hundred bits per second, or approximately thirty characters per second. Now we go to line twenty where we say R equals 65385 colon T equals 65384. Using those two numeric constants will make the program a little smaller and cause the program to operate at a speed compatible with the modem. Now, we go to line 30, where we say I equals peak, open parentheses, R, close parentheses, 
and 8. Colon, if i greater than 0, then print character string, open parentheses, peak, open parentheses, t, close parentheses, close parentheses, semicolon. That will test bit number 8, or the, rec or the receive bit of the status line, to see if there is data incoming. If there is, it will peak 65384, the address we've assigned to T, to get the incoming character and print it. If there is none, we'll go right down to line number 40, where we say K string equals in key string, colon, if K string equals nulled string, then go to 30. This will allow us to check our keyboard to see if we're pressing any keys. If not, we go back to line number 30 where we check for incoming data. We'll otherwise have outgoing data ready, so we can go directly to line number 50, where we poke T, our data register, with ASCII value of K string, colon, go to 30. That will take our outgoing data from K string and poke its ASCII value to the address 65384, where the cartridge sends data to the modem, and then our little loop begins again. Now, run your program, and your RS-232 cartridge will turn on at 30 characters per second using, par using no parity bits. At this point, you can now send commands to your modem assuming that it's got a command set. If it's manually operated modem, you're still looking good right now. The program you've just typed in is what we call a terminal program, which will allow you to use your modem to access other computers that have modems, like bulletin board systems. Using a bulletin board system, you can meet other computer users and get other nice freeware or shareware programs for your computer, plus information on clubs in and around your area, perhaps even a color computer club. You won't, however, be able to get any programs of any kind with this terminal program we've written. We're, for, for just for now, let's just use it for the sole purpose of making contact and getting yourself established. This is a very powerful function by itself and should be used as often as possible, preferably every other day, to keep you informed of what's going on in the computer community. Let's see what sort of things can go on with a sample session on a bulletin board system. Try this. First, we're welcome to the system, and it tells us, if we're a new user to the system, to use new user for the name. Okay, so it's asking for the name now, so we'll type new user. Okay, it's checking around, and also it knows we're a new user, so it wants information, so that we can get full access to the system. Okay, it wants a name first and last with no alias. So, I'll put my name. And now it wants a street address. We'll just tell it 20 
Coco Drive that wants a city and state. Okay, to Orleans, Louisiana. Okay, now it wants a phone number. So we'll put 277-6880. Okay, now it wants to know what we'd like for a password. Okay, so we'll use Coco User for a password. Okay, we're being thanked. Okay, validation, which is the process of putting us into the system and everything, will take a, about 24 hours. We'll have full access to the system by then. And we're thanked, and carrier is lost. Now let's take a look at the line printer and how it's programmed. If you haven't done so yet, turn on your line printer. There are two commands to use when you want to communicate with the line printer. And they're these. Print number dash two, comma, and L list. Let's examine the print number dash first. This is nothing more than a print command which uses a buffer number. A buffer number is sort of a channel for data to flow through to and from a device or file. Device buffers range from negative two to zero. Anyway, buffer number dash two is the one we'll work with for now. It's the one we use to write data to the printer. Say you wanted to send a line of text to the printer. You, you would write a short, simple program like this one. First, we'll clear out memory with new. And then we'll start with line 10, where we input, quote, enter, a line of text, quote, semicolon, a string. Now we go to line number 20, where we say print number dash two, comma, a string. And finally, we terminate our program at line 30 with an end. Now run the program and enter a line of text. Uh, the printer should then respond with the line of text onto the printer's paper. Then the program will end. Let's enter a line of text. Now, better yet, we'll do a one that's a little shorter to save time. This is a string. Okay? On the paper, you'll see the text entered in the program. It doesn't matter what it was that you typed. It'll be sent to the printer regardless. This is a really nice feature that will give you much enjoyment, especially when you're printing out long text files and just about any other information you might have to print out. There is, however, one drawback to your printer. Unless you have one of the versions that prints out in color, your text and pictures would otherwise be in black and white only. By now, you might be wondering what would happen in the event that you used a print number dash two command without data to be sent to the printer. Well, in the actual result, you get something different in different situations. If you had a comma, following the print number dash two command, 
you would get one of those aggravating syntax errors that you see from time to time. This is because it was expecting to find data to send and found none. In a second situation, which is quite different, we leave off the comma. And you have effectively faked the computer into believing there is data to send to the, to the printer. And since there is no actual data, it prints one of those nifty little nulled strings to the printer. And for all practical purpose, it is printing a blank line to the printer. And now finally, we'll cover the ldist command. It's used in the exact same manner as the list command we spoke of several weeks ago. The only difference is that when you use the ldist command in your program, the list will be made to the printer instead of to the screen. If you haven't cleared out memory yet, you should still have the print to printer program in there. Try this. Type the ldist command. And your whole program should be listed to the printer. This definitely has possibilities. But is it really identical to the list command? Let's find out with a few variations of the list command. Try typing this. Okay, first we say ldist 10 dash 30, enter. Then we'll try ldist dash 20. And lastly, we'll try ldist 20 dash. It obviously does work like the regular list command, with the exception of it that it's sending text to the printer instead of to the screen. This is really a great function. It'll save you a lot of time and confusion later on when you start writing your own little programs and going into larger ones. Because the ldist command will let you see your whole program at once instead of just scrolling by on your TV screen, hoping to pause at the right moment. All this works really nice when you, when you want to print to the printer any program that you have in memory. But have you yet given any thought as to what, you would, what would it do if you want to print out an ASCII text file? that you have on disk or cassette tape. Some of you more adventurous programmers probably had such a question pop up in your mind. So that nobody gets left out, we'll type in a short program here which we, that you can save on tape or disk to use whenever you need to print a whole text file that's on tape or disk. Here's how it goes together. First, we'll clear out memory with new. And then we'll start with line number 10, where we clear 1,000. That will give us plenty of string space in case some text strings get longer than usual. Then we'll go to line 20, where we say input quote, file name, quote, f string. That will take the name of the file name we enter and place it in f string. Then we go to line 30, where we input, quote, disk or tape quote, semicolon, 
D string. This will ask if we're reading from tape or disc and place our answer in D string. Then we check on it in line 40 where we say if left string, open parentheses, D string, comma, one, close parentheses, equal, quote, T, quote, then D equal minus one. Else, D equal one. That will check which device we're using and assign D as the, de as the device buffer number. Okay, then in line 50, we open, quote, I, quote, comma, number D, which we just defined, comma, F string, which is our file name. That will do the function of actually opening the file. Don't worry about how this command works. This and a few other related commands will be covered in the next show. So we go to line 60. We check to see if EOF, open parentheses, D, close parentheses, then go to 110. That's another one of those commands. It's testing to see if we reached an end of file condition. And if so, it'll send the program to line 110. Now, in line 70, we line input number D, comma, A string. That's another one of those commands we'll cover next time. It's using a new method of retrieving data from, t from the tape or disk and placing it in a string. Now we go to line 80, where we print a string. That will take the data we've read in and place it on your TV screen. Now in line 90, we print number dash two, comma, a string. That will take the same data we just printed on the screen and print it on the line printer. Now, we'll go to line 100, which says go to 60. That will return the program to line 60 where the loop restarts. Now, we go to line 110, which is where we go on that end of file condition, and we close number D. That's another one of those commands we'll cover next time. This was closing the file we opened earlier. Now in line 120, we'll terminate our program, end. Now before you do anything else, save a copy of this program on tape or disk. On tape, that's C save quote printout quote followed by pressing the enter key. Be sure your tape is positioned to where there's an empty spot for it. On disk, you should save the program with save quote printout slash b a s quote followed by pressing enter once you have your program saved you can be sure that you have a copy of the program to use when you're you're ready to use it to print out a file. In order to show you how this program works, I've captured the data that we received when we logged into the bulletin board system and placed it into a file called BBS data. 
Now run the program. And here's what we get. First, we're asked for a file name. So we enter BBS data slash DAT. Next, we're asked if we're reading from disk or tape. In this particular situation, we'll be reading from disk. So we enter disk. Now you should see the disk drive come on, and the next thing you see is text being printed on the screen, while the same text should be coming out on the line printer. This can be of great use to you when you've come across a program where the instructions are in a text file. You can get that situation quite often, and this little program will put it on paper for you. Now, before we go, let's take a look at what we've learned and how we can use it. First, we learned how the RS-232 cartridges has four addresses in memory, which we can use to turn on the cartridge and send data in and out of the modem. And we can actually change the way the cartridge works to operate at different speeds or how many different bits we'd like it to use or whatever. And we saw the print number dash two command and how we can use it to send a string or a string variable to the printer at any given time. Then we saw the ldist command and how it can be used to print all or part of a program's lines to the printer. That's about all the time that we have for this week. Next time, when we come back, we'll do some reading and writing to cassette using the basic commands of open, close, print number dash one, input number dash one, line input number dash one, and the end of ever popular end of file command. See you then. Thank you for watching. We hope that you've enjoyed the show and that every person that watched will benefit from the information we've supplied. Remember that using your computer is a process best learned by repetition, so spend a little time with the computer and get to know the information we've given. Remember, if you have a problem with any of the information we've supplied, give us a call. One of our many experienced members of our club will be more than glad to help you with your information. If you missed the show, let us know. We can have a tape of the show you missed ready for you to view at the next meeting. That's about all the time we have for now. So tune in again next time when we continue to learn your color computer.